How come that elitism is even a thing in Overwatch? I mean, we're talking about the game where a monkey pretends to be a scientist, a British girl is playing jump rope with a loss of relativity, and hamster in the backline is an actual callout that's used unironically. Heck, other competitive gaming communities are laughing at us for pretending that Overwatch is an esports title. Should we really be segregating each other into different camps of perceived skill levels? Well, considering the current state of skill rating distribution on ladder, it seems obvious that Blizzard ain't doing it. So so I guess that's where we come in. Marking aside, since the release of Overwatch we always had this discussion and it really does not surprise me. Looking at the roster of characters it is immediately apparent that some of them were designed to be more beginner friendly whereas others are built to be a bit more complex and difficult to play. I mean, the heroes have difficulty levels for crying out loud and while we can discuss the validity of difficulty level assignments for certain characters, <laughs> Baptiste, the point is that this is not a foreign concept. This was an intentional design decision. How is this even a debate then? The community is assigning difficulty levels to the characters as much as the developers. So why are we fighting each other about it? Well, that's because in any given meta, difficulty levels and in-game value don't always happen to scale in a way that players can agree on. <laughs> What? As a baseline, a more difficult character should always get more value than an easy character when played equally well. If I'm really good at Tracer and Junkrat, then there should never be a situation where I get exponentially more value out of Junkrat than Tracer just because of how much more difficult she is to play. Okay, now let me tell you why that is nonsense. Don't get me wrong, the basic idea is not stupid or anything. It makes sense to suggest that a character that is more difficult to play should yield more value than a character that is easy to play. But that is assuming that Overwatch has been designed in such linear fashion, and it should be rather obvious that it hasn't. If aiming was the only relevant mechanic in the game, then it would be really straightforward. If you happen to be aiming more better, then you should be getting more better value and more better rankings. Heck, you can even add a couple more things to it before it gets really complicated. Like for example, movement, awareness, and reaction time. And with all these things in mind, a linear power curve can still be achieved. There are various ways of achieving such a hierarchy, but quite frankly, there are plenty of channels out there that focus on explaining game design and I don't think I can do as good of a job as they do even if I tried. So let me bastardize the concept here real quick. You have two players with each an unknown skill level. If you want to determine who is the better player, then you have to put them on even footing. Both players are given the same weapon and are tasked to take each other out. Whoever can consistently beat the other is then classified as the better player, and they would be awarded a higher skill value. But what if one of those players suddenly has a different weapon? What if one of them has a shield and the other doesn't? What if one of them has a damage amplifier and the other doesn't? Overwatch is not an arena that puts two players against each other on even footing. That's why 1v1 duels don't make for any indication of player skill. Because our game, from the ground up, has been built as a 6v6 objective based hero shooter where switching characters at any given point in time is an option. If you win in a Widowmaker matchup, then that does not mean you are a better Overwatch player than your opponent. It could mean that you are better at aiming than them, but that is only a subset of all the skill sets necessary to be a good Overwatch player. Being better at aiming does not make you inherently better at the game. It just makes makes you better at aiming. It's like one sixth of the equation to determine your value as an Overwatch player. And all these things make for the parameters that then define skill. It includes team play and hero switching as much as positioning and aiming. To be a good Overwatch player, you have to be good in a match of Overwatch and not be better in a 1v1 duel. I mean, if anyone suggested that them reaching Grandmaster in competitive FFA made them a Grandmaster Overwatch player, then pretty much everyone would disagree. Because it's not the core game mode that makes Overwatch. It's an arcade game mode, something designed for fun over balance. And quite frankly, the entire idea of Overwatch has been built with fun over balance in mind, or at least it very much appears to be. If you could go back in time and ask the developers as they are making the game what their vision for Overwatch is, what do you think they would say? A balanced competitive experience? A way to consistently assess mechanical skill? A Twitch arena shooter? No. They would tell you that they want it to be fun for everyone. They would tell you that they want to be accessible. In fact, don't take my word for it, let's hear Jeff Kaplan and Chris Metzen talk about some of the fundamental design choices that they thought were most important during the creation of Overwatch. It's that balance between keeping them very accessible. Sometimes the accessibility is their immediate look, and oh, I, I think I get it, I think I get what that person does. Um, it could be a, you know, a mix of the sound and the, the character expression and everything, but ultimately that that accessibility is one of our, our, our most deeply held values as we shape this thing. Yep, and we carry it over into the gameplay. So we, 
what we talk about when we're discussing things like non-Twitch options is giving you other, other things to do besides put crosshairs over targets. We know not everybody's great at that, and that's what drives people out of a lot of other shooters. We want to welcome everybody into this universe in a lot of different ways, and one of the ways is making sure that we have playstyles represented. You know, I always notice there's those people in, in WoW who always, you know, I always want to play a healer. It doesn't matter which healer it is, druid, priest, whatever. Yeah, it's awesome. So why can't we give you that in our game? Why can't we have things like that? So you can see Mercy's up there. Accessibility. The point of Overwatch is indeed not to out-aim each other at every opportunity. It's about accessibility. It's about giving everyone a chance to play the game, help their team and contribute to a victory. That is why we make this very important distinction. Overwatch is not just an FPS, it's a hero shooter. The game is more about the heroes than it is about the mechanical act of aiming. I know the argument will be made that non-Twitch options are fine and all, but they have no right to be anywhere near the higher ranks. And my retort would be, do they really though? If we're talking about a game that was fundamentally designed around the idea of giving everyone a chance to participate, then the thought of having these types of characters all across the ladder is not really all that far-fetched. They are an integral part of the game and its design, which might also explain why Blizzard is trying so hard to achieve a level of balance that allows all of them to be picked across all levels of play. With that design philosophy in mind, it should occur to us that we can't expect a linear power curve to exist in a game that was built around accessibility. It's about options. But let's get back to the whole discussion surrounding how much value any given character is allowed to provide. The general idea that an easy to play character as a baseline should provide less value than a difficult to play one. All things be equal, that is pretty much the case right now for most of the characters in the game. I honestly hate to admit it since there is a whole laundry list of characters that I want to see nerfed, but I want them nerfed not because I don't like that they are easy and get a lot of value, but for purely selfish reasons. It's because I don't like playing against them and I find them annoying. If everybody was able to admit to that simple truth, then this whole conversation would probably have a bit of a different tone. A lot of people like to hide behind the excuse that is a perceived skill requirement, when in reality, we're all biased in favor of the characters that we like to play. I know that saying they're only good because of the current meta is kind of a cop out these days and seen as a lazy excuse more than an explanation. Like, should Doomfist be able to delete squishies with the press of a single button? Should Moira be able to get loads of damage done by blindly tossing her orb into the enemy team? The the answer to a lot of these questions is a definitive no, but why do these things happen? Characters in Overwatch are not contained in their own power ecosystem. Moira is not powerful just because of Moira. She is powerful because there's currently very little in the way of viable counter picks against her. If we were playing D.Va and she ate every single orb that Moira tosses out, then suddenly we have a case for Moira being too weak. But would anyone complain about Moira being weak, in light of the fact that she's not as difficult to play as Ana and Zenyatta? The faction of Amy elitists for sure would not complain about that. If you need any more convincing, think about Junkrat. For the longest time, from the launch of this game onward, Junkrat has been the crown jewel of low skill BS frags that people always, always complain about. We had the same discussion about Junkrat that we currently have about Moira in Doomfist, so why are we suddenly leaving him out of the conversation? Because we barely ever see him picked. Nobody would complain about Doomfist if he was never played. Nobody would complain about Moira if Ana was a viable pick against her. We need to get rid of the idea that the power levels of characters are solely defined by their own statistics, because the game as a whole is incredibly interconnected. A 50 damage per second value, all else be equal, is a very one-dimensional figure. But add the context of an actual game of Overwatch to it, and suddenly it is not so simple anymore. Especially if you add 10 other players as variables and the thousands upon thousands of hero combinations that follow as a result of that alone. Like, okay cool, I can do X amount of damage to another player if both of us decide to just stand there and fight it out 1v1. But that is not what a real match of Overwatch actually looks like. How powerful a hero is depends hugely on your team composition, the enemy team's composition and the map. Knowing how interconnected and volatile these potential power levels are, it really is important to look at where the source of any given problem comes from. And that includes the question of why are not any of the counters being played? Because naturally, characters have been designed with counterpicks in mind. And if it turns out that these counterpicks can't 
be played because another character simply provides way more value across the board, then suddenly you got yourself a culprit. There is a lot of mental gymnastics involved in finding out what the problem is and how to handle it. Like, is a character providing too much value as a baseline, or is another character not providing enough? Would that character be weaker if another one that they synergized with was toned down a bit? What if we give one of the counters a bit of a buff? There are like 27 million different angles of attack for any given balance related problem in the game. There's really nothing big brain about this, it's just something that a lot of us say very offhandedly without ever elaborating on what we mean. Like, oh yeah, sure, I guess balancing is not all that easy, but what if they just nerf Sigma? And that's where the, well, actually, starts to come into play. The part that matters more to developers than it should ever matter to us players. And the fact that most of us never consider any of these difficulties really is a testament to that. We're just here to play a game and not to balance it. We don't have to make sense of it because our salary is not on the line if we're wrong. And as such, we can spout whatever nonsense we want. Including the nonsense I'm spouting in this video. Really, I just wanted to conceptualize the idea of Overwatch to you. Stop looking at it for what you want it to be, and start looking at it for what it actually is. This is not the cartoon version of CSGO. This is Overwatch. Its own game with its own skill requirements and its own goals. And by nature, some heroes will always have an easier time fighting other heroes, skill requirement be damned. There are simply more moving parts to it than we often give it credit. To. Believe it or not, but saying that you think something is not fun is actually way more valid criticism to a developer than you claiming that it is unbalanced. Because the developer knows if it's balanced or not, but what we find fun is a very subjective matter. In that sense, it's more about pleasing the majority than pleasing everyone. If most of us simply don't like playing against Moira because we find it annoying that she's cluttering our screen with her abilities and we get frustrated over the fact that she has a lock-on beam and we don't, then that alone is already a great piece of criticism for the devs, and all of that without us pretending that we know better than them what is and isn't balanced. You can be elitist about it all you want, but if there's anything that Shroud taught us, then it's the fact that there's more to this game than just aiming. Never forget that Overwatch was built from the ground up around the idea of accessibility and not aiming. And honestly, like, get over yourself. Again, we're playing a game where hamster in the backline is a legitimate callout. Please don't pretend that we're taking this like super seriously or anything. It's a game. It's supposed to be fun more than it's supposed to be balanced. And by the way, I just want to address this because I know somebody's going to comment on that. Some people say that any hero that is currently besting you will always be annoying, but that is not entirely accurate. That might be true for some players, perhaps those who are not quite as mechanically skilled or knowledgeable about the game, but in a lot of titles, Overwatch included, being taken out with great effort or in style is actually often celebrated. Yes, we're pretty whiny in our community, but Ana landing an amazing sleep dart, Widowmaker landing a 1 in a million jump shot, or Winston juggling into oblivion are all things that a lot of high rank players don't complain about because they know how difficult they are to pull off and as a result they even celebrate it. But hey, that's just my opinion and you are more than welcome to tell me down in the comment section below that I am a poo poo head and my opinion is stupid. But seriously, as always my friends, feel free to have your discussions down in the comment section below. Until then, I want to thank everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to go the extra mile, a $5 membership goes a long way in supporting the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.